Hi, everyone, and welcome to our talk today on between and within subjects design research. Oftentimes, when it comes to uh, research, we think about how do we do it in SAS or SPSS, and, and how do we accomplish what we seek to do uh, without thinking about what would be the best design for our particular uh, study at hand. And so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to start off with what does it mean to engage in between subject research design? And that really looks at <clears throat> um, the between idea thinks about multiple groups uh, who do not get the same treatment. So that's the first thing that we want to do. We're looking at measuring the differences between those two groups, right? If one group, uh, <clears throat> let's say for instance, uh, was an experimental group and one group continued to get the control treatment, this could be for medical research, this could be for educational research, this could be for marketing research or whatever else. Oftentimes we <clears throat> have been doing a particular strategy or technique for some time. We wanna see if an experimental technique would uh, lead towards greater achievement or greater earnings or what have you. And therefore we wanna engage in a study between two different groups. So we're gonna have a control, continue to do X, and we're gonna have another group, an experimental group, continue to do Y. <clears throat> With that said, oftentimes there's more than three groups who can actually participate in this research. So instead of looking at things through a t-test or a two-group design, we would be using an ANOVA, an analysis of variance, to look at, <clears throat> let's say, instead of using the control group, we wanted to do an ex three different experimental groups. So we wanna get one group, let's say, uh, tr through the traditional print environment, we wanna get another group through a hybrid design, we wanna get a third group uh, through a fully online design, for example, in educational research. So <clears throat> some of the considerations that we wanna think about when engaging in between subjects design research is number one, do we have a random assignment of students to the groups? What kind of assignment? Was it just by chance? Did somebody select the participants in their group that they wanted most? Uh, or was it more of a randomized sample? Are the teachers, and again, engaging in educational research, <clears throat> are the teachers the same teacher across every group? So would it be me as a professor of record teaching two different sections of one class? Or are there going to be uh, two teachers for both of those sections? So again, the more that we think about these considerations and try to minimize the difference, the better results we'll have at the end to actually measure the variable we care about. The third point is the initial level of competency. So our students who are in these groups starting out at the same level, right? So we can do a pretest design, for example. We can see if there's statistically significant uh, difference between those two groups. And if there is, we can do some things to think about that. If there isn't, then we can go ahead with the study and say that they're comparable. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, we're going to look, we're going to think about replacement time. So if one group is a control, and another is an experimental group, and the experimental gets a particular treatment that the control doesn't, what does the control get to do during that time? Uh, and, and what are we gonna do, to, let's say that uh, when the experimental group got an extra 15 minutes, what does the control group do during that same time? So those are things that we need to consider. And again, as I said before, reducing those extra variables uh, permits us to actually more accurately measure uh, the difference in the variable of our interest. So we wanna see, for instance, in this situation, uh, <clears throat> for three different modalities of math instruction, as I mentioned, face-to-face, -face, hybrid, or fully online, we wanna see which mode of instruction will lead to better outcomes or academic achievement. And so because it's three or more groups, we would use an analysis of variance. Shifting now to the within subjects design, as opposed to the previous one, all the participants in this design receive all of the conditions. And I know that might sound weird on the surface because sometimes we think uh, experimental control, two different groups, but oftentimes we can use one group to be able to determine the differences. An example of this, um, that where, two, where participants get both treatments uh, in this would be where uh, students in a classroom could get small group instruction and they could also get extra homework in order to try to lead towards academic achievement. And we can do some analyses on the back end to see which of those uh, actually led to a better academic achievement growth for those students. And this would be uh, what, what is often to known in certain research, such as this book from Huck right here, uh, as different levels, right? So the different levels of the independent variable here 
that are again trying to lead towards academic achievement. The rationale for these designs are several. We're going to talk about, I believe, five of them today. The first is when we think about between subjects uh, design, that minimizes the learning and transfer across conditions. So, for example, within the within subjects, if you get both treatments that are measuring the same domain or the same theme, oftentimes you'll learn something with the first treatment that will transfer over to you doing better in the second treatment. And therefore, it nullifies a lot of the, of the accuracy to what we're trying to measure. <clears throat> the second is the between subject studies often have shorter sessions. So if we're just using one group of students to measure two different treatments, we can't possibly do uh, the same amount of instruction or the same amount of treatment in the time that we have uh, that we could have done with two different groups where they would have gotten a, a larger treatment sample time. The third is between subjects experiments are easier to set up. Uh, we have uh, multiple independent variables. Um, we have two different groups. It's, it's very straightforward and so on in terms of uh, the visualization of it, the setup of it. We don't have to think about time crunches, et cetera, et cetera. The fourth is within subjects designs require fewer participants, which is a good thing. And oftentimes they're cheaper to run if we're paying participants uh, for their contributions. And then finally, the within subjects design minimizes random noise. So if we have two groups of students back to the between groups design, oftentimes there's other factors that led to them coming that day. So whether they ate breakfast, whether they are in a good mood, whether they had a car accident on the way to the research study, all those things matter. And by reducing, let's say, two groups of 30 uh, down to just 30 people who are receiving the same treatment, we know that we can reduce those uh, extra variables and what they call the random noise for the within subjects design. I thank you for your attention today. I look forward to answering any of your questions that you might have about between and within subjects research design. Take care and all the best.